Well, hello there, everyone. Uh, we're now back for another uh, Joint School Live session. And for those of you who've been following us from the beginning, or have gone back and checked out all our previous videos, you may have realized that we've been getting a little bit too hip in terms of the hip to knee balance. So today we'll be doing a really good job of addressing that in a thorough manner uh, with Meridad Shamali from MSK Physiotherapy, who will be joining us to go through prehab exercises for partial knee replacement. So there we are. Meridad, thanks for joining us. Excellent. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Pleasure to oh, be involved. Yeah, I'm great. It's a beautiful day here in London. We're still you know, getting used to the strange circumstances and long overdue, we're doing some more knee replacement stuff. So thank you for that. Excellent. No, that's all good. Um, I specialize in obviously MSK injuries and a lot of uh, work in central London, our clinic. We uh, do pre and post-op rehab for knee, hip, ankle, shoulder. So yeah, it's a very interesting topic and looking forward to it. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, and, and I know you're, you're going to give us quite a, quite a thorough overview of uh, some exercises that can be useful to do when you're getting ready for um, a, a partial knee replacement. Now, uh, it's, it's, it's sort of on me to wave the safety flag as ever. It's really important that you know, what we go through today, their general overviews, recommendations, it's not specific medical advice, and you should always check with a physiotherapist who knows you, um, or indeed your surgeon, before you start any new workouts, any new routines, as ever, as ever. But having said that, we do hope that we'll be able to put some useful reference points in terms of the types of exercises that can be useful to do uh, before a partial knee replacement. And we will be doing a video soon where we talk more about really what the difference is between a partial knee replacement and a total knee replacement. I think that could be a whole session on its own. But the key thing to remember for the purposes of this is that, of course, a partial knee replacement, as it sounds, is a smaller procedure and a th than a total knee replacement. And so if you are having a total knee replacement and you're watching this video anyway, bear in mind that you will, you know, generally you will need to be using an extra bit of caution because, of course, the total is a bigger procedure than the partial and, and we need to be a bit more uh, careful uh, in that respect. Is, is, is there anything else you'd like to add on that before? Yeah, exactly. um, I'll add to that um, with the overview page from the slide. But like you say, um, there's a lot of exercises here um, and everyone needs to kind of take it with a pinch of salt. They're just ideas. Always consult your physiotherapist specialist and then go from there when you have a solid plan. So here is just more ideas what to do um, and how we can kind of progress. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Perfect. Well, on, on that note, Mirdad, over to you. I'll be, um, you know, I'll, I'll be following you along, and I may, I may pipe up with a question as we go, or we'll sort of summarize things at the end. Perfect. So, Super. I look forward to it. Sounds good. Okay, so can you see the slides and everything? Mm -hmm. Yeah, looking yeah. good. Perfect. So, yeah, basically, prehab. Prehab is basically exercises before your surgery. Uh, we're looking at partial knee replacement. So, here you can see the overview. Partial knee replacements are surgeries which involve replacing one part of the knee compared to total knee replacement, which is replacing the whole knee. And partial knee replacements are usually performed with smaller incisions, therefore quicker recovery time compared to a total knee replacement. And reasons for surgery are severe pain, uh, knee pain uh, still present once you've tried different treatments, um, sleep disturbance is a big one, pain limiting limiting uh, specific kind of daily activities which can be very frustrating and annoying and also arthritis. Here we want to also uh, confirm and just say that patients may be required to stay in hospital for one to two days sometimes, some may even be able to go home on the same day. Uh, most patients are able to walk um, with assistance until they're comfortable to walk better and show good walking ability. Um, not all patients, uh, most patients are actually full weight bearing with assistance or aids and they're able to walk pretty good until they won't need the aid. And this could be, again, different time frames for everyone. Just have to make sure that you're following the right plan um, and how things go, you're progressing stage by stage. Yeah, and I, I guess that's, that's a great example of something where you'll be given a specific plan from your surgeon and your team about whether you can be... Yeah, the, the exact plan for, for exactly it's just more recommendations and also things to look out for so take uh, whenever i see my patients i always ask um from their consultant is there anything that they've asked 
for you not to do and if there's anything um, they want you to do. So then we have a clear plan of what to avoid and just to be a bit more safer. Um, usually there's no issues, but yeah, sometimes there are. So yeah, before your surgery, you know, make sure that everything you need um, when coming home is available for yourself in your environment and your house. Um, so here we're looking at obviously chair setup. You want the chair to be comfortable, stable, adjustable and use of cushions. Have, have some cushions around you to help make sure you're comfortable at all times because it's, it might be a tough uh, period of time, especially at the beginning with a lot of weird sorts of aches and pains. Um, bed height is really important. You want to make sure that your feet, you're able to touch the floor um, comfortably. Then you can get out and in a lot easier. You want a firm, stable mattress to kind of keep you grounded and holding your position as and when needed. Um, bathroom setup is huge. Uh, you want to make sure you want to um, be able to reach everything in your bathroom because obviously in the bathroom it might be a bit more dangerous. It might be slippery, so you just got to be careful um, because your range of motion and strength is a bit reduced. Uh, things to look out for. Grab stick is also uh, very helpful. Uh, if you're struggling, you can grab um, use one of those tools to grab whatever you need around you. It's just easy. So the main goals, main goals here, uh, mental and physical preparation for the exercises which you're gonna have to do once you have, after your surgery. And um, so it's good to start with these exercises we're gonna go through to prepare the body and also yourself um, for everything that's gonna come up. They will be very similar. Um, there'll be a bit more kind of advanced at the beginning and then you'll have to go we work your way back down and then work your way back up again um and again here you want to make sure you perform the exercises because these will help you in terms of looking at research better recovery time after your surgery as well uh, general upper and lower limb uh, strengthening to make sure you're pretty strong going into surgery um Again, knee strengthening is huge and also maintaining your knee range of motion so you can perform most daily activities as much as you can. Um, and you want to be able to keep active and moving as much as possible and as pain and discomfort allows. Um, just so you're active, your muscles are not fatiguing and also you're not losing any uh, good muscle mass because you will have to you know, rest for a period of time and work your way up again. So we're gonna start off here with just some a nice and simple exercises these are just isometric squeezing the glutes and squeezing the thigh helping activate the muscles around the leg and also uh, around the hip nice and simple pop a rolled up towel underneath your knee for the thigh squeeze and also um, squeezing clenching your bum at the bottom for the glute squeezes these can be performed as soon as you come out and also easy at home whenever wherever you're sitting or uh, lying down Axel, join in, jump in whenever you need to. Yeah, yeah. The, well, so the, the, those two exercises are, um, you know, the, those of you who are already using the, uh, the Joint School app, you'll find both the, uh, the, the buttock squeezes or the glute squeezes uh, and the thigh squeezes or the, the quad squeezes already preloaded as videos within the app itself. Um, but of course, also, if you go to under the More tab to the exercise planner in the app, you can then film and you can add your own exercise videos. Uh, so you can create your own plan that matches what you've been advised to do. But these two are really important to highlight up, uh, you know, as, as a first set because, you know, as, as Meredith has said, they're very easy to do pretty much any time. But also it's really, really surprising how quickly you can lose muscle mass, particularly in, in, uh, in the buttocks, but perhaps maybe even more so uh, around the thighs after surgery uh, during that time of recovery. And it's exactly those muscles that you're going to need to help you get going again. Exactly, yeah, and we work our way down all the other exercises I'm going to show. You need really, you know, glute strength. It's not just working on your knee, it's working on all the other joints to help support the whole body to get you moving better and doing specific activities around the house or even outside. Um, so, yeah, it's more of a kind of teamwork. <laughs> Everyone has to work absolutely. together with the muscles. Yeah, absolutely. So, here we've got some exercises to help improve your knee flexion. Um, after your surgery, you're going to be quite stiff around the knee and you might lose your range of motion. So you want to perform these heel slides. There's many different ways you can do them. These are just three. Um, 
you could do them lying on, on the floor. Obviously, you can see I'm using a mat at the top. There's a bit more grip, so it's a bit tricky and harder. So you might want to use the video on the bottom left, which is basically sliding on a smooth surface, which is quite easy. And again, you're going to go with ranges where you're comfortable and increase that knee flexion, bending your knee back as much as you can every other day or every day uh, as pain allows. Yeah. Um, the heel slides with active assisted is really good. If you're struggling, you can use the other leg to give you a bit of support and prompt you to push back a bit more. Yeah, again, this is a, a, a great set of example uh, exercises and just it's about finding the ones that, that work, work for you in, individually. Um, but also what this shows is kind of like the, the next piece of the, of the puzzle. So you need, to, you, you need the muscle and the muscle bulk and the strength, but you also need to be able to move the knee and get that range of motion to be able to get going and to, to, to be able to do the things you want to be doing and, uh, and, uh, and regain that quality of life and independence uh, you know, at fairly quickly, or at least at the time we want after surgery. Yeah, exactly. And um, there's many different ways. So here's another one, uh, lying face down. Um, bending your knee, you just got to find, like you say, uh, the exercises which work for you. Um, I always say don't make it a chore, make sure it's easy, perform which one you can, and you know, play around with different exercises to see what you're comfortable with. Um, so for some people, this might be quite easy, it might be quite challenging, so therefore you might try the other, uh, one of the other three we have. Yeah. And, 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 and I'm sure many people out there will come across uh, this concept of range of motion and, and the idea of, of really keeping the knee moving and it's and, it, and this is perfect timing for this video because it's not it's not only about bending uh, and, and what we'd call flexion but really really important is also extension and getting the knee straight after surgery exactly yep so here we're going to go through some extension exercises um, I always try to make sure get clients doing these as quick as possible to help both knee flexion and extension range of motion is really key straight away um, so here I'm using a foam roller to pop my feet up on the uh, roller and then just letting your leg fall, your knee fall, help gravity uh, drop that, increasing that extension, popping it down. You can also uh, squeeze your thigh to help prompt that push and bring the knee kind of dropping down as much as you can here. Yeah. yeah so. and, and, and with that one, it's worth saying it doesn't have to be, um, you know, a, a specific gym uh, roller or a camera. What, what are those things called again? Uh, this is a, just a generic foam roller I'm using. Roller. Yeah, like yeah, just a, just you, a foam you can use a towel, you can use whatever, as long as you've got that space for your leg, your knee to fall, um, yeah. it'll do the job. Yeah, so, so someone once showed me taking a, a can of beans and wrapping a towel around it. That, yeah, perfect. It's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Exactly. You've got to improvise and make the most of everything. Yeah. So many ways you can, I've seen you know, from clients that have shown me different things. I've learned so much from them. Yeah. It's like, wow, you can actually use this. <laughs> um, so yeah, we got straight leg raise. Um, this is a really good one for your core hip flexor and your thigh strengthening. Um, this is quite, we're getting kind of more challenging now. This is quite a tough one. As you can see, I might be struggling a little bit. You won't be able to go too high with this. So go as high as you can, making sure you squeeze the thigh, engaging your abdominal and your core. And again, doing a few of these up and down to just prompt and help increase yeah, that. And, and, and as you say, Murda, like in, in this particular video, you're, you're going, you're going fa fairly high, but it doesn't, you don't necessarily need to go that high, even, even you know, like a couple or four inches up, as if, that, if, that's, if that's a good starting point and it feels like yeah, that, exactly. that works. Yeah, exactly. And you work towards that. You know, you set yourself a little range and you work towards that every day or every other day to help increase and you don't have to end up going too high. Um, yeah, exactly. So again, lying down exercise is side lying hip abduction. Good for strengthening around the hip and the glutes area. Again, important for once you start to regain your walking, sitting up, uh, getting down from a chair. Big powerful muscles we need to work. Um, and again, same thing as the exercise before straight leg raise. You want to go as high as you can. Uh, as long as you're clenching uh, around the bum area, using that muscle that we want to target, that's the main goal. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that this is a good example of one of those exercises where you want to try to make sure that you're doing it with good control so that the, uh, as you lift the leg, it kind of maintains and stays in line with the other leg and it's not sort of wiggling around or moving around too much and the foot's not pointing to, you know, too far up or down and, and things like that so that you can do it you know, nicely, slowly and calmly and, and, and with good control.
Yeah, exactly. I always say try to point your heel back a little bit so you're not in front and then it engages your glutes a bit more or you can actually pop your heel on the wall and slide your foot up okay. and down. No, that's that's another variation which is quite easy. But yeah, main thing, you usually want to be in line or just behind yeah. to really get that crunch in the glutes. So we've got the clam exercise. Again, same sort of area we want to target and strengthen, just a different variation of how to do another exercise to target those areas. Um, nice and easy to perform. You can also do these um, with a band once you get stronger. But again, staying in your range where you're comfortable and just doing a few repetitions of these with your plan. And so with the band, you'd tie it over the- Right the around the thigh. And pull against. Yeah, so around here usually, I would say. Yeah. And you start off with a lighter band, usually the lighter colors, and you know you don't have to go too high. Maybe increase your sets and reps rather than increase band strength. Yeah. yeah. Nice and easy to perform. Again, like I say, controlled. Make sure they're controlled. Uh, calf raises. Calf raises are really important. We've got two variations here. So just the normal standard calf raise, standing and seated. At seated, we're looking at the soleus muscle. Standing, we're looking at the gastroc itself. Overall, we're you know, working the whole calf here. Again, really important down the line for balance, walking, um, stability, great exercises. The seated uh, version is quite easy, so you can usually pop your elbows on, your knees um, for a bit more weight, or you can grab a bottle of water or anything. Um, as long as you're comfortable, great exercises to perform. So, for these. so seated, Knee extensions. These are um, quite challenging, similar to this uh, straight leg raise. They're very good uh, thigh strengthening muscles. So you can see on my left side, I'm right footed. I can go a lot higher with my right foot because my right side is a lot stronger. So technically say if you've had your operation, you won't be able to do much here. Um, you start off maybe just doing a kick and letting your leg fall and then gradually you'll build up and try to hold for a second or two or even kick a bit further out. This is again something you have to play with, but a fantastic exercise for your fight. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and again, this is uh, you know, the, these kind of exercises where there's a lot of uh, bending of the knee, it's really important to just make sure that you're following the plan from your surgeon or from your physiotherapist, especially in those early, early days after surgery where you know, there's a bit of swelling, there might be a bit of leaking for, from, from the wound, which you want to make sure that you're keeping pace with, uh, with what your team are expecting you to be doing at that point in time. Yeah, exactly. And um, the plan has to be set properly. Good contact as well to consult and physio. Regular content is also vital. Sometimes, like I said, the exercises might be easy. Sometimes they might be too hard. So you really have to kind of change them up, mm. uh, trial this one, take away one exercise, add one. So, you know, it's, it's a good process, but stick to it. You get good results from each exercise. Um, Seated band hamstring curl. So uh, doing a knee flexion, again, most of these exercises are working your strength and your range of motion. And um, here we're helping improve your knee flexion by having a resistance to the band. This is more advanced and also improving the strength of your hamstring muscle, which is uh, behind your thigh. Really important. Um, we focused on, we showed you a lot of exercises on the thigh itself. So now we're looking at the, around the glutes and also back of the thigh. This one's one of my favorites, um, really good one to perform. Uh, we've got ch uh, chair triceps. So this is uh, some arm upper body strengthening. Whilst well, you've got everything going on down there with your knee and your hip and <laughs> strengthening, you want to also continue being nice and strong with your upper limb because let's say if you're using crutches, you want to be able to uh, support yourself and um, use those crutches comfortably. And also when you get in out or uh, get in, in a chair, you still want to make sure you've got decent uh, upper body strength to support your lower limb yeah absolutely and it's, it's uh, as you say it's uh, it's easy to forget about about, about the arms when uh, when when getting ready for for knee surgery but but really in many cases you may well find that you know you're using your arms more than usual uh it, certainly in those first days and weeks after surgery with with crutches and yeah, as you say murder pushing off from from a chair to help get up and things like that so it can really, really help to start working on uh, w working on the arms before surgery. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's so many exercises we can do here, but that will be for another presentation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, this is just one, which is probably for me the key key yeah. one to kind of work with, just to throw out there. It's good. 
So I think we're going to move on to more now of the standing exercises. We've got marching, high knee kind of marching on the spot exercises. Again, helping kind of improve that knee flexion. Also, you're getting the hip flexion using your thigh muscles, your glutes, your balance as well here. You're going to improve. Fantastic exercise to get you kind of uh, back to walking and also stepping. Again, if you've got stairs, you need to kind of make sure you can lift your foot quite high to get over the step or stair. Um, you're going to have a bit of tightness, stretching, quite a help, it's, it's helpful. Um, here's a hamstring stretch, quite nice to perform, to kind of try to release and just mobilize the hamstring itself. You might feel it at your calf when you do these. Um, again, great bit of exercise, nice and easy to perform, use a chair, a wall, whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah, but a bit of stretching you know, can, can really help. And one thing we didn't, we didn't mention, but which, which tends to be a good idea too, is to always warm up a little bit before you start doing a full, full set of exercises. And, and perhaps depending on where you, you are right at your recovery, but marching on the spot can be a really good way of just sort of warming up the body a little bit before you start going through uh, like a sequence of exercises. Exactly, yes. Yeah. So the ones we're going to go through now are actually quite good because you're standing, just moving the limb in all sorts of directions and getting you warmed up. Um, but, you know, usually I would... Oh, lost your audio there a little bit, Merda. Hello? Uh, I think it's back. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, it's back. There's a little yeah. bit of a glitch on it, but I think it's coming okay. back. Yeah. So yeah, I was saying basically, um, all these exercises, there's many here, but usually stick to a few which do work for you. And yeah, warm-up is definitely important. Again, using which exercises you feel comfortable and you enjoy, use them as a warm-up, use some for an actual plan. But again, that, that's a conversation you need to have with you know, the physiotherapist. So I sit down and educate and advise patients what to do exactly when. Mm -hmm. And this helps because I'm in regular contact with them. We use WhatsApp, email, whatever is convenient to kind of help you all the way through that progress. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because things do change. You need to, you know, keep adjusting your plan all the time. Yeah. Um, this one's quite good. Standing hip flexion, helping improve the strength of your hip flexor. So at the thigh higher up here and also, again, balance. All these exercises will help kind of integrate the more balance and just stepping ability as well. Great exercise. This one might be quite easy for some, quite tricky for some. It depends how much, you know, good muscle bulk you have and how active you were previously. Mm -hmm. Standing, good warm up for all of these. And, um, and of course, again, with a little safety flag, make sure that, you know, that, that in the video there, you've got a nice sturdy chair. Make <laughs> sure that, you know, you've, there's, there's a support at hand if you need it. Even when you start to feel a bit more confident and you're progressing, make sure that there's a good, you know, whether there's a kitchen yeah, surface or a sturdy definitely. table or something. Definitely, so yeah, like you say, Sturdy chair, stable chair. You can see I'm even using a mat which has grip. Yeah. Um, really important because sometimes a lot of my clients they get a bit too excited, then they want to go from not doing much to you know doing as much as they can in two days. So it's always making sure you're safe because you don't want to have any issues down the line or any problems. Um, so yeah, like I said, just make sure it's safe. <laughs> and, and and I guess that's the problem. And I, I know from um, from a friend of mine who's a physiotherapist, she says that you know. The exercises are meant to be a bit fun and motivating, but if rehab doesn't get boring, then you're not doing it right. <laughs> yeah, no, I would say the exercises are going to be boring, but you've got to make it fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Proper, you know, TV program you enjoy on, put music. Um, yeah, yeah. But for me, it's when you get the feedback from the patient clients that, you know, they're improving. For me, that's, uh, I get a lot of good feedback from that saying that, you know, we really enjoy the program because like every day I'm doing a bit more and I'm able to do yeah. Yeah. a little bit more than yesterday so that's just motivating in itself and it's just easy keep it simple I always yeah. try to give only a few exercises to make sure it's doable yeah that's yeah for sure so hip extension using uh you know kicking back strengthening the glutes um really good exercise mm -hmm. so hip abduction standing abduction again similar to lying down exercise we uh, showed at the beginning um, just performing it in standing might be easier for some um, to start off with because you've got the support from the chair or the wall. Um, and you go, you know, I'm going pretty high to the side. You can go halfway to start off with or even less as much as you can, as long as you don't have any discomfort or pain. These should be okay for the actual knee. 
it's just more strengthening of the kind of hip area. Standing knee flexion. So again, this one quite good to help increase that knee range of motion. Yeah, it's so not a sure classic. Yeah, exactly. It's easy. You'll probably be doing this straight away in the hospital as, well, as quick as possible before you go out, just to improve that knee flexion. Bending, bending, bending. Yeah. Although if you've been advised not to do something like this just yet, then that's the right advice for you. So there's always going to be different things and there's a lot of factors that will play into that. But odds are that at some point, if you've had a partial knee replacement, you will be doing some exercise that is not too dissimilar from this at some point. Mm -hmm. Very good, exactly. Yeah, And it's just as long as you've got the balance and the strength from the other areas of the body, yeah. you can crack on. But yeah, always follow the surgeon and physiotherapist's advice with all these exercises. Yeah, yeah. So here, these are they're more interesting, exciting exercises. Um, mini lunges, using your support. Um, so this is a few days down the line, maybe a few weeks for some. Um, getting really the whole of the lower limb compound exercise uh, to strengthen everything here is really good for your balance, stability, and also building that quad strength, glute strength, working your way up and down. Mini lunges, excellent. I love giving this one out as quick as possible. And then we've got here mini squat. This one a bit easier, but usually a favorite because everyone feels like they're starting to do a lot more than just swinging your leg out. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. Oh, our next slide, very good. And and at uh, what point would you generally advise people to move from sort of a mini squat to going deeper into it? Um, so again, it's just making sure your knee range of motion is it actually getting beyond the point where you can go as far as you can. And um, if it's quite stiff and there's pain. Um, I wouldn't push too much into it and um, make sure you're comfortable because you don't want to feel pain when you go in quite deep yeah. as long as you're bending as far as you can you build on that every day you don't want to go from let's say a tiny mini squat to uh, a really bigger squat the day after because that can cause a bit of pain it might swell up the joint and then you're having to kind of rest a little bit more and you might not be able to continue this exercise so rather literally add a few percent of movement each time rather than a big percent of the movement so you can gradually progress yeah, yeah. sit to stand um excellent similar to the other exercises mini squat lunges again compound exercises or this is more kind of um important for daily life you want to be able to sit to stand you might uh, i'm using kind of a normal chair if in the early stages you might pop a pillow or a cushion to start off higher and um, just to make sure you're able to sit to stand and um, some people sit down and then they end up not being able to get up <laughs> and need support so yeah use a cushion to pump yourself up and then a great exercise to perform bending the knee range of motion and there's, some, and there's some very variations here i guess starting with like you know making sure it's a sturdy chair where you can push off and then perhaps going to you know, trying to stand without using the arms and so on yeah exactly so yeah you can see my hands on my knees this is quite uh, let's say the advanced version compared to it and now i'm using the side to push off and again that's why we want to do the kind of tricep upper body exercises to help you push off at the beginning yeah yeah, yeah. important and um, we've got some wall squats so on the video on the left um they're isometrics basically i'm just holding at different angles again helping with that knee flexion also the strengthening of the thigh and um, you might want to start off with this one Mm -hmm. um, just my mouse on the left and then you work your way into actually sliding um, as you can see I'm going lower and lower with the isometrics on the left yeah. you might you know start off high here and then eventually gradually build yourself back way down 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 until you're comfortable to start doing a slide and with the slide you might go halfway up and down then you might uh, add on to that and go a little bit lower but again like we discussed it's more about knowing when to increase the activity. You don't want to increase too quick, too early, because that can cause yeah, more yeah, than that line. Yeah, I, th I think as we've said, you know, that, that's, that's true for all the exercises. To kind of listen to your body, listen to your knee. Don't do too much too soon. Don't rush. And I guess this is also a good example of something where you really want to be sure that you're comfortable with the level that you are at or sort of how low you go before, before you move on and before you progress from that. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's a process. So you have to be patient and just stick to it. Some days are going to be boring, some days are going to be better. But, you know, it's, it's a process for healthy in the future. 
Yeah. Um, got some balance exercises towards the end once you're quite comfortable with everything. Mm -hmm. uh, these are really important, obviously, helping reduce the risk of falls, improve your walking ability, walking speed, overall function. And for me, this one is huge confidence. A lot of uh, clients are quite scared to go for a longer walk. Mm -hmm. And that's something you don't want to take away from someone. You want to make sure they're as active as possible mm -hmm. and making sure they're pretty happy with their knee and confident to step over a curve or step down or get onto a bus in, a, in and out of car. Really important, increasing your awareness as well. You're using a, you know, a lot of proprioception here and just you're aware of everything. Your foot and ankles working, your knees working, your hips working, your abs. Really important, balance exercises. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I guess, you know, we've, we, we've said it already, but it's always worth saying again, is that with balance training, as, it, as with anything else, where there's any chance of losing your grip or your balance, uh, is uh, it's, it's good to do it in a space where, you know, if need be, there's a steady support at hand. Yeah, exactly. Um, always do these close to a wall or a chair <laughs> or even a friend <laughs> to help you support. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's all from kind of the prehab prescript. There's obviously a lot more exercises, but these are pretty much a lot of the ones you, you will see. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, 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 I think that's a really... Um, yeah, that's a, that's a great overview with a lot of classic exercises that I think, you know, most, if not everyone watching this who is getting ready for a partial knee replacement is pretty sure to encounter at some point in, in the rehabilitation. But perhaps with some interesting variations on, on, uh, on, on some of the classic exercises that, that, are, that are out there and that, that would sort of be commonly used um, in, in the rehabilitation for both total and for partial knee replacements, to be mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, it's a similar. You're going to come across these exercises a lot for both, um, in general, knee rehab or knee injuries or hip injuries. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Just making sure you know what to do individually for that person yeah. at what time. Yeah, yeah. And of course, it may, we, we may, there may well be someone out there watching this video just now who has actually had a hip replacement. Uh, and a lot of the exercises, you know, may, would well be relevant for someone who's had a hip surgery as well, but with the hips, there's some extra cautions and you have to be a little bit extra careful because there's the risk of dislocation. And in some cases, uh, you may also be given specific uh, precautions or sort of rules of some movements to avoid for a certain period of time, so particularly in the early recovery. So that's worth bearing in mind. And you know, we've said it a, a couple of times already, but as ever, you know, if you're uncertain, just double check with your physiotherapist or surgeon. Yeah, exactly. So like I say, with the hip is a different um, case. It's really important, I always say, um, make sure recommendations and things to avoid. You get this from your consultant and you have a regular contact with both physio and your consultant to make sure everything is safe. Um, mm -hmm. with some people might be able to do much more. Some people really need to be careful. And again, it's just being patient and following protocols. Yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And, uh, and I understand, Rhoda, that you'll be doing face-to-face -face visits before too yeah, long. So hopefully, we're going to be based in um, Covent Garden. And from September, early September, we're going to be uh, having a lot of more face-to-face -face visits. Now it's just more video consultations and follow-ups. But looking forward to actually getting hands-on and working in clinic with a lot of pre-op and post-op uh, surgery. So really yeah. looking forward to it. Yeah, I bet. And, and of course, if, you know, for, for those out there who who don't have uh, you know, easy access to coming down into London. I, I presume you may still be doing virtual appointments. Yeah, I think that's something we'll continue because it's worked out so well. Um, a lot of clients have kind of been surprised how well um, they've been able to improve with just video. So yeah, we're going to be continuing. <laughs> Great. Well, and, and hopefully this video has been, has been helpful too. Uh, for, for those of you using the, the Joint School app, you know, af after a set of exercises, a great time to just take a moment to log those exercises, track your progress. We've got some updates to the app coming in soon, so if you've got some suggestions or some ideas or something that you're missing, something you'd like us to add, let us know. We'll get to it. Same goes for this video. Let us know what you thought. Was it helpful? Are you getting ready for a partial knee replacement? Have you had one? Are you on the road to recovery? Did we miss anything out? Let us know and we'll get to it in an upcoming video. Uh, and until the next time then, well, thank Perfect. you to everyone watching. Thank you, Merdan, for joining us. Thank you, thank and, uh, you so much, Axel. Yeah, no, stay safe, everyone, and keep up the good work. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.